welcome to episode 10, 10, double, fi- double figures, double digits of uh, the Brugaders dynamic duo of beer and comics. We are doing porters today, we've actually opened one on Colin's suggestion, um, yep. um, so we're going to do porters and we're going to do just our four comics as well, so we'll fire and just tell you what we're drinking just now. Yeah, but we've already cracked open um, this one which is a Baltic porter. From it's a collaboration between North Brewing of Leeds and Boundary of Belfast. So this is what seven seven percent Baltic yeah. porter. Porters are always a wee bit more alcohol, aren't they? They're they're in the. They tend to be straight yeah. strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Actually, can I bore you with some history about porter beer? Yeah, please do. Right. Okay then. So porter beer uh, originates from London. Yeah. Um, around the 1700s to 1800s, early 1800s, um, and um, they, brew, they brewed dark beers because of the wa- poor water quality. Yeah. It wasn't good for making um, light beers, yeah. so they tended to um, use the roasted barley, uh, which gives it this distinctive colour, um, and it does beer. tend to be um, a stronger beer. Um, so porter came about because the beer that was made there was popular amongst the porters. Yeah, people okay. who used to, you know, have barrows or, or yeah. wee boats to, you know, shift your stuff around the 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 ports, the the docks uh, okay. in London. Um, and stout is a variant of this. So a see. stout porter meant like a hefty porter okay. that could, you know, shift loads of stuff. Um, so a stout tended to be a stronger so porter. I, did, I was going to so ask that's if where, you knew. where it all comes from. So yeah. a lot of the Obviously, when we were talking about Porter, I was looking at stuff and I wonder if that would fall into that category and that it, 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 it calls itself a stout. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so the stout Porter, which yeah. eventually just got contracted to stout. Okay, nice. But these Baltic Porters, um, which um, in the, when Porters were getting made in London and, and they exported, they were very popular around mm. the Baltic states, those countries around there, um, and they started brewing their own. But because it being you know such a cold place, it's brewed at a lower temperature, yeah. so that makes a a Baltic porter. Oh, nice! So there you go. There's the style. So, um, so I think this one's quite pleasant. This say uh, we were noting, noticing hints of berry, some sort of berry or summer fruit mm. kind of smell in it, but and it's there in the taste. But It'd it be is. interesting to find out where that's coming from because they don't list any. No, it doesn't give you any notes or anything um, on the can for this. But yeah, immediately smelling it, you've got a strong kind of berry flavour yeah. um, coming through it. And yeah, like you say, you still taste it. It's interesting, like, um, porters have become the um, one of the go-to beers for me that I wouldn't have, if you'd actually asked me to name a porter at the start of this process, and no, we're mm. only 10 weeks in, but um, at the start of like us doing this, if you'd said, like, do you like porters, I would have been kind of, I would have suggested maybe not. Mm. But um, yeah, it's become one of the things I really, yeah. really enjoy drinking when we do these podcasts. Oh, yeah. I, I do quite like a porter from yeah. time to time. I'm not used to drinking four at one go. Um. It would be interesting to take our 6% podcast mm. and work out the average ABV and do yeah, it for this yeah, one. Yeah, I think because we've not, we've not purposely... Because this one is quite high. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay um, what do we have comic-wise today? Oh, Bill, well, you show me yours first. Uh, so I went on to... Comic House again and found mm-hmm. um I, I like to go on to the new releases but a bit like Netflix and we've talked about how Comic House is like the Netflix of yeah. independent comics and yeah. um, I found something I thought that was really interesting Jake Stone I think the comic's just called Jake Stone um, I believe this is going to be the first part in hopefully an ongoing series about this character but this revolves around the character Jake Stone going to Piney Flats Motel and going on some sort of sinister crazy adventure and um, my I, I'm gonna. This is gonna be an odd one for me to review, but I've got Justice League number twenty five, which is the end of their current st- series arc, and it introduces the Year of the Villain, which is going to be the big um, DC event this year in the comics. Um, yeah, what have you got? Um, I've brought along um, a Commando comic, Dead by Dawn, which um, was one that was released last week to coincide with the D Day yeah. commemoration. So there was a uh, four of them last week. Um, all in the theme of D-Day, so that's what it's I've got the, um, It's also the title of the British, when when they released Evil Dead 2 in Britain. Oh, Dead, Dead by Dawn. Well, we oh, throw right. back to last week. I didn't know that one. I had no idea if that's got any relevance yeah, I don't, to don't, it. I don't imagine but, it does. But, it yeah, throw back to our... Dead, Dead, uh, Dead by Dawn, something our, our, our zombie-inspired uh, beer of last week. Um, and my other book is Lady Mechanica 4, The Clockwork Assassin. Mm. So, graphic novel. 
Awesome. There we go. So, mm. what did you think of uh, our Baltic port? Or I enjoyed it. At, um, this is quite interesting flavours and quite unexpected flavours. I, I really, really did enjoy it. Um, it was quite smooth as well. Mm. I wasn't, I expect um, from a porter to be quite, quite smoky. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's. I don't know if I'm. I'm being. I'm being misled by that flavour of the, the mm-hmm. fruit. Yeah. But, um, I didn't find that as like, we've we've tried porters in the past that have been like, like you know, yeah, if, if you really eat, powerful rich yeah. flavour. Yeah. And um, you can feel it in your mouth that kind of smoky aftertaste. Mm-hmm. That I would associate yeah. with like eating something yeah. like from a barbecue yeah. even. You yeah. know. Um, but yeah. yeah, I really really enjoyed that. Um, and I think that was very pleasant beer. Yeah, for sure. So intrigued to see what the rest is going to be like. Cool. Do you want to do a comic first? Yeah, why not? Can we do it? Can I just get this out of the way? Is yeah, let's just... get this out of the way. Let's right. get so Justice just, League. This was five dollars in America, so which is probably mm-hmm. the in terms of ongoing series, quite an expensive comic in terms of you know, I'm 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 used to uh, independent comics or most Marvel and DC series are set about three ninety nine. I know mm-hmm. DC have I've been talking about bring them up. But um Justice League twenty five came out last week and it is the um it is the flagship series in in the DC comic series, it's probably the top seller, and it um, it is often the series that introduces the big events that are coming on. So the you know this, this is the series is ongoing, and then because it stars all the DC superheroes that you know, it introduces what they're going to be doing for the majority of the summer. And the big summer event this year is called Year of the Villain, uh, which feeds into the story, uh, particularly towards the end of this one. So this this it is a bit of a bumper series, which is probably why it costs five dollars. It had um had two actual two big stories in it. It kind of finishes halfway through, so which I found quite strange. They they, they actually finished like a huge story arc by halfway through the comic, mm-hmm. and actually if you if you go through it, they, they do stop like it, it it very it stops it genuinely stops and then about halfway through the comic it begin they begin a completely new story mm-hmm. which isn't it isn't common in yeah. Marvel series. So actually it, or any sorry DC series. It was just I found it quite strange. I had a look online to see what the um and I, I mean my message you saying I was this I was quite angry by the kind of I, I, what I thought was quite shoddy or quite um just quite bolt on soap opera esque mm-hmm. storylines like it, it it shut the story down and introduced what the what you know the next story very very quickly it overlapped. Uh, I, I just felt like I was being sold something and I was quite annoyed by that. Like it, it didn't feel natural. It felt like mm. right we've done that. This is what we're doing now. Um, and the, the, you know the it's um, Snyder and um, it's Scott Snyder it's James Tinney and the, um, mm-hmm. who do the writing and I, I expect better from them yeah and I was I was quite I was quite annoyed by that I was, um, but then I, I just, you know everything we do is subjective and that's just my opinion and I've, I've read online this getting a really really good write up yeah um, most people are giving this 8 out of 10 9 out of 10 and 10 out of 10 so I don't know if I'm missing something I may have to revisit it when I'm less <laughs> angry Um uh, I cancelled my subscription based on this. I was just I just mm, phoned to what, our, our shop, the yeah. shop heroes. And I mean, I don't know if they've I don't know if they've clocked it. But I've been following the the main DC line for two years non-stop, and this and it's coming to an end for me this month. Yeah. Um, maybe just looking at other things. Maybe just doing this this um, series of podcasts with you is me and open my eyes to what comics can be elsewhere. Yeah, but yeah. Um, and maybe I just need a break, and maybe just yeah. a bit burnt out. But I was um, there was I mean there was some good stuff in there. There was um, there's a really cool storyline with Superman. Where um he is stranded by the the baddie on a planet with a sun just far enough away to keep him alive, mm. but uh, sort of close enough to keep him alive, but far enough away that he can't really draw any energy from it to mm. be Superman, and about him trying to find an internal uh, an internal strength to deal with a situation, and um he obviously comes out at the other end in a really cool, quite powerful place where he understands, um who he is but also understands the role that his friends have like you know, why is Wonder Woman important to him why is Batman important to, to who he is and it's pretty cool because um, I don't really like Superman he is quite a one dimensional character mm. at times and he is often critiqued to be so and they, they cover that in the they cover that you know he even, uh, even acknowledges that I am quite one dimensional I am quite narrow minded mm. and I need the other Justice League characters to fill me out as a person yeah. which, was really, which I was pretty cool mm. that was quite smart um, but yeah it's leading on to the villain of the year uh, the year of the villain series that's going to be or a series of comics there's going to be loads of them it's the big event that's going to mm. per- permeate throughout the whole f- and I'm not on board for it I actually just cancelled all my DC stuff Yeah, which um, 
I don't know. I don't. I, I've not spoken to Abby about that yet, and I know we're hoping to try again on the show soon. So mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if that's a common thread or if I'm just grumpy. Uh-huh. But um, yeah, well, I, I'm not a DC or Marvel follower really. I only pick up the occasional yeah. one here and there, because I have felt that the storylines are very samey, mm-hmm. or um, they're not really that deep. DC probably slightly better than yeah, Marvel. Yeah, yeah. I think Marvel were, were really bad for just mm-hmm. turning out. Samey stuff all the yeah. time. DC a bit better. And dialogue's a bit better. Tends to be in, in DC as well. But I feel that you know you can you can miss an entire event and, yeah, not, well, and it really doesn't matter. Yeah, you pick I, something else up. I just felt like my last two years of comics have been tied up in a tied up in yeah. in half an issue, which was annoying for me. Um, I also wanted to note, and I said to just put it to air that um, a front cover is of um. um Aquaman's on the front cover. He doesn't. He's not been. He's not featured in the, D, the main DC line in about five issues. So I don't. Mm-hmm. I, I thought yeah. kind of misled. So j- jump on the bandwagon yeah. of a recent movie. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's, yeah. that's sorry, they did. By the way, they did that last year. The whole the whole DC event last year was Aquaman driven to tie into the tie into the film. Yeah. Um, so that was that. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, DC. <laughs> kind of crapped on your your comic a wee bit there. That's fair. You know. Um, so, new beer time. Beer number two, what are we going to go for? Can I make a selection? Yeah, yeah go on. Because um, I, want, I want to talk about this. I actually oh, laughed oh. at it just before you came to the door. I'd like to do the Orkney Porter. Right, okay. Um, um, from a Swanee, Swanee Brewery. Yeah, uh-huh. it's, a, it's a place in Orkney. Probably need to get my wife through. She lived in Orkney for a wee while. Let's see. Okay. Um, sorry. Let's get you a bit of this thing. Um, so, this is... A classic strong. It builds itself as a classic strong porter. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for some some smoky flavours. Um. So what is this? This is nine percent. Nine percent. Whoa. I, I think this may actually be the strongest beer we've drank on the show. I think it probably is. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Orkney modern classic porter. Uh, it's supposed to, we're supposed to be looking for right. What are you what What are you picking up from the smell? I have to say. It, it's, oh. it smells like red wine to me. It's got a strong berry yeah. flavour, um, almost grapey red yeah. wine. It reminds me of that. Um, Whoa. I, I, I can really look at it so I can pick it up because I can see it here. It's a bit smoky as well. I mean, you know, um, sometimes you get like fruit juices and stuff where they add barley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I'm picking that up, but they, they have roasted grains in here. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. really strong <laughs> yes. yeah it's very powerful and um, yeah the alcohol f- is coming through yeah, yeah, a lot yeah really a, a lot it reminds yeah. me of did we not have a was it a porter that we drank a co- or the coffee beer that we drank a mm. couple of weeks ago you're right it's got a similar I don't know if that's a, str- a strong that. alcohol content but there's yeah. a coffee element to this yeah. as well there's there coffee is a, there's coffee and chocolate coffee chocolate I look at untapped fruity flavours there I look at untapped a lot, well, so I, I would a lot of my beers on Untapped, and it's good fun. If anybody actually likes train spot on their collecting card games, you should use Untapped. It's like, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it, there's a geekiness to the beer culture that I quite like about Untapped. But I was I read through the reviews, and I wanted to read this because this actually made me laugh. So I, I try and be quite clever when I'm writing my reviews on Untapped. Sometimes I have to wait the next morning because mm-hmm. if I've been drinking beer, yeah. it clouds my judgment. <laughs> and I, 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 um, long time listeners and viewers of our podcast will notice that. Our, uh, our vocabulary and our um, the ability to articulate kind of reduces itself by the last five ten minutes of the podcast. <laughs> but um, there was a guy that I, I I'm not going to name him, but there's a guy that wrote this was his review. It's a dark multi affair, black as night, and it's heavy. It's some sort of oppressive heavy thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm quite like the, the word oppressive there because yeah. that's how it's feeling to me. It's like oh boy. I don't think I could manage much more of this, you know, just this little. I just like that you used heavy twice in this, the word heavy twice in the same heavy, sentence heavy. as well. It's a heavy, heavy mm. thing. <laughs> it is a heavy, heavy thing. Oof. But it's really good, bitter and very malty com- flavour coming through. It, do- it, it doesn't taste as, as fruity as it smelled. There's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot going on. I, I couldn't drink more than a bottle of that. Yeah. I don't think I could share more than a bottle of that. No. Very no, strong. That um, Compared to the last one, which was really quite smooth mm. and went down really well. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm struggling with that a wee bit, to be um, honest. Yeah, for sure. Um, I wasn't expecting it. Maybe, um, 
And maybe have one bottle with some ice, actually. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I drink, how I choose to drink that. It's just really strong beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not this, it's, it's not a bad It's beer. almost medicinal. <laughs> it's not a bad beer, it's just... <laughs> well... I just I, yeah, I, I, if I, I got it for Father's Day on Sunday I'd be dis- or whenever that is it's Sunday, it's Sunday. Or, is, is it it's Sunday, Sunday? It's Sunday for us it depends when you're watching or listening oh, yeah I suppose um, yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, right okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on what's your comic <clears throat> well <laughs> I think I'll do I'll do the commando comic right, so Dead by Dawn um, D-Day commemorations last week so they brought out four. For those of you who don't know, Commando's been around since the 60s, still ongoing. They do eight every month. Yeah. So uh, so four come out every fortnight. Um, some of them are reprints of older yeah. ones, and some are new. Sometimes they do a special like this, where it's like new stories yeah. you know, um, for a particular theme. Um, this one, interestingly, is by written by Kate Dewar, who's one of the few... Female can- commando writers. Okay. Um, there have been a few, you know, since I think the seventies or eighties, but um, not many. Um, so the story follows um, a, a bunch of Royal Marine commandos as they um, head out on D Day, and uh, follows their their missions, their successive missions to to get to a particular uh, town and capture it and things, and what happens along the way. It's a fairly run of the mill sort of uh, story. The usual thing that there's a bit of animosity, bad blood between two people in the, okay. the unit, or you know, um, it's it's and, and what it is this time round is that um, the officer and one of the men are related, so he the officer's kind of been accused of kind of looking after yeah, the youngster, favorite bit favoritism there, um, and that comes out and obviously the you know the person who's been been you know, the younger person who's the, who's the favorite kind of has to. Um, you know, show his courage and prove himself. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and in terms of you know a commando story, it's fairly run of the mill. No real surprises um, there. But you know, a, a solid enough story if it's one that you just pick up and and, and read because of the D Day tie in it works quite nicely. You know, it's got that kind of opening sequence of the boats coming in. You know, the the sort of uh, saving Private Ryan yeah. kind of start. I was trying to explain uh, D Day to my son. I've got an eleven year old too. Is like, so why is he was he, he was asking about D Day, and mm. um, I think they don't really cover those kind of elements of World War Two in primary school. He's only mm-hmm. in primary seven. Yeah. Um, I was trying to explain it, and uh, I, that that would be maybe something I would pick up, I might pick up and and show Sean because it um I, I did uh, I did consider showing him the first twenty minutes of Saving Private Ryan, mm-hmm. and my wife advised me that that was possibly <laughs> a bit too much for an eleven year old. Uh-huh. Uh, mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, you know, comic book mate. Do it. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was nice. Um, how did you think we've talked about Commando comics in the past? How does the artwork? Would it been a D Day commemorative? Um, the, the, art, that... the artworks. No, I can't remember who the artist is on this one. Um, Manuel Bennett, maybe. Yeah, it is. No, no. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. it is Manuel Bennett, who's done both the, the cover and the. Yeah. the and I quite like his work. It's very Commando, um, and quite good quality. Yeah. There's there's one or two artists, current artists, I'm less keen on their artwork. Mm. Um, but I think his is, is very much of the style that anybody would recognise as being commando. Yeah. You know, it's it's reminiscent of the style that has been for, you know, the forty, fifty years that's been around. Yeah. Nearly sixty years. That's amazing. So cool. yeah. That's cool. Nice comment. Um Right, we're gonna open it. I've got to have You you've got to finish that. <laughs> well, well uh, Jeff is finishing that and um, we've got a mocha porter as well so this, this is this really is, uh, well. I'm actually the Northern Monk so we, we tried the Northern Monk beer a couple of weeks back to the Golden, Did, um, was that the Golden Free one? I think it was Golden Origin, Free. Origin it yeah, was called Origin yeah. so um, let's see what this one's like Northern Star 5.2% so it's our lowest ABV beer yeah, uh, um, it's still uh, quite a strong one. So. There you go. Um, I see that. How much is there? I think it, is that five point. No, it's seven. That one's seven. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, we can't really say anything about the colour because they're all you can't see through them. The um, I had a. Whoa! Ga- this is a, different. Very different. I had a Ganon 
the Ganyan spice porter at the weekend, and it actually the, the color was quite changing. It was actually quite thin by the bottom. Oh, really? Which was quite interesting. It was, I was drinking it in one of the kind of the winey flute beer glasses that we got. Oh, smoky. Coffee, coffee beans. Yeah. Yeah, it smells like. I mean, it. it's mocha, you know, so we'd expect that. And I think this is some sort of collaboration yeah, between North them Star Coffee Roasters. And, yeah, coffee, coffee Roaster. That's which is right. It's yeah. called it, the beer's called Northern Star, which is obviously alluding to that. Um, I've heard really, really good things about this. It gets a really good rate up. So I mean, and very interesting, yeah. Taste of coffee. Sweet goes down well. You bit smokiness there in the aftertaste. Um, that that it's in mocha. There is a creaminess yeah. to that. That's that, a, yeah. I wouldn't say it's bitter at all. No. It's quite sweet. That smells so. That's such an interesting smell. It actually doesn't smell like it's going to taste. And we've had that a lot with some of our mm. porters. I always remember, like, was it episode two or three when we drank Tiny Rebel Stay Puffed? Mm-hmm. And we weren't getting any sweetness from the flavour, the smell, but the flavour was yeah. really strong. Yeah. That smells like it's going to be really bitter. I think. I'm expecting that from um, I'm expecting that from the smell, like that roasted kind of mm-hmm. bitter tang. But I'm not getting, getting the, the bitterness, taste. not at all. But it's got a nice, almost chocolatey feel in the mouth. It is like a, a, a mocha. Yeah, I like that. And they, um, they, I do know that they um, like if you're having a liqueur coffee. Yeah. It's so there is a bit. Of, there is a hint of chocolate in that. You did. Yeah. You did say that there is chocolate in there. There's also um, some sort of natural milk sugar. They say so. Like uh, this is probably the mocha ah, element, right. that creaminess in there. Yeah, it's nice. That's that's I really lovely. Like that. That's I really really, really nice. Like that too. Yeah, well done. I have missed dinner, and I don't know if the mic's picking this up. My tummy is rumbling. Like Ooh. yeah. yeah. Which is probably not going to help my articulateness in the next review, but <laughs> yeah, I like that one. Yeah, good, well done. Good job. I'm interested. Like, um, the smell and the taste was was quite complicated and and and, and separate of each other, in my opinion. Mm. Um, but that's sort of been picked up even by the the way that Northern Star, uh, Northern Monk, discuss this beer. They, they you know they're talking about that they're being like a a separation between smell and taste. It mm. was quite cool. Um, we we're definitely sort of picking up that kind of thing. Um, that's really good. Uh, right, Jake Stone was my comic choice number two. Um, I have started on your recommendation, Colin, started using the Comic House app, so it's like an indie comics Netflix kind of application. Mm-hmm. Three pound a month. Three pound a month. It's really yeah. really good. Actually, and slightly less if you if you if you pay by year, it's thirty quid. Yeah, so that's I think right. you. Yeah. Um, Shaving six pounds yeah. off, it brings and it then down there's down. an ad free version as well. Yeah. Though the adverts just pop up yeah. before you start a comic. Yeah, they're not. You can, but, they're but, not bad either. But they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're a few seconds and you can close yeah. it. Um, but you can get an ad free one for I think it's five pounds a month. Yeah. You know, if you're I think also if you if you if you pay in advance, which I like <clears> to do if I've got the money, if you pay in advance, you you, you cut off that wee bit of pay as well. So actually, thirty quid of a year it would cost. So you're saving two months off. Mm. Brings it down to about yeah. less than less than two pounds thirty. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good deal. Um, mm. There's loads of books on there. Yeah, really yeah like loads it. And um, loads. I think I've got two or three of my books are on there as mm. well. Um, we the Peter Cannon's on there. Like we we've reviewed, the old we've older reviewed. Peter Cannon. Yeah, it's lined up yeah. for me to read. I haven't mm. started it yet. But um, some aliens comics and stuff as well. Yeah, there is yeah, pretty, um, Flash Gordon. Some of the. Um, is it DC's legendary? Is it DC that does it? No, it's not. Yeah. Dark, no. dark Horse, I think. There is, yeah, series yeah, yeah, there's loads of Dark so, Horse stuff, actually. Right, some of the so older the, stuff. Yeah, yeah, some of the older stuff's on there. So. so it's really good for just independent, self publicated comics. Like, obviously, you've done, you've got books up there. Um, we reviewed a couple of weeks ago, we reviewed the the Forest, the Chair, and those mm-hmm. that reside there. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah. That was really, really good. Um, and I picked up this one just because. I thought it's been reviewed quite well. Um, it's, Jake, it's called Jake Stone, and maybe just go Jake Stone Piney Flats Motel. Um, it is by Steve, written by Steve Lowe and Russell Barnett. Um, it was created by Steve Lowe, and it's coloured by Chelsea Lowe, who might be related to Steve, I think. Um, um, but yeah, it's um, it's pretty crazy stuff. Uh, it's twenty nine pages long. Well, twenty is less than that. Probably it's about tummy. Um, twenty five, I think, if you take off like the the advert at the end and at the start, but um, 
Uh, it's it's just a story about Jake, Jake Stone. I think it's going to be a new comic series. It's mm-hmm. been it's been billed as a new series. This is issue one. He's a lone biker who just drives from town to town and happens to attract some crazy supernatural and uh, urban legendary oh, things. Okay. Um, it goes along a blister in pace. He, he blows out his tire, so he has to stop at a motel. When he's in the motel, um, the um, the as part of his as part of his key um, paying his bill, he gets given like a jar of moonshine for a local moonshine. He mm-hmm. drinks this in a winner. Um, he um he wakes up in the middle of the night and there's a uh, blood on the wall. I mean, this is by this is by page twelve. There's like yeah. creepy birds. There's weird dogs. Um, there's the def- deformed girls oh, obviously right. paying some sort of homage to that film with the hotel the shining, the shining yeah. it just goes a bit man oh there's Nazi yeah. scientists oh, I'm, I'm on issue I'm on page 16 of 29 <laughs> now um, oh, cryogenic oh, na- right. I've got to yeah. read this the, the artwork's looking good I'm, I'm, you really know, it's got a, an indie yeah. comic standard but reminds me of um, good with a wee bit of sort of time and, and, and support you know it's it's on par with some of the the vibes of um, Winnebago Graveyard and some of these sort mm-hmm. of these these crazy comic yeah. dark comics yeah. that, that we both read in the past it just goes a bit mental um, it reminds me I, I thought it reminds me of these sort of zany B-movie stuff where you have like no budget and you're trying you're, you're trying to get as creative as possible mm-hmm. um, you're throwing everything at the wall and seeing how much sticks yeah. you know um, there's no like I said there's there's almost like like these I'm trying to get old hammer horror stuff or maybe sort of the late seventies early late seventies early eighties um zombie stuff where it's mm-hmm. like they um, um even like we talked about Walking Dead and stuff not the Walking Dead um, the Evil, Evil Dead, Dead stuff yeah. like you know Sam Raimi and that mm-hmm. did that have yeah. no budget at all and you know they were they were filming they were filming um, moving camera shots by uh, strapping stuff to the bonnet of cars and yeah. things you know it was it was all really art housey um. Comic reminded me of that. I just really enjoyed it. It reminded me of um, it reminded me of that sort of vibe. It's even the whole thing where like all of this craziness kicks off, and at the end of the next morning, Jake w- drives off and is more back into the sunset to relive this sort of adventure again, presumably <laughs> in fear or just yeah, just moves on somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, really, really, really good adventure. Um, but okay. also, yeah, um, starts ends. You know, <clears throat> they don't need to do any more of this series. But they decide actually that Jake Stone thing was a bit weird to us. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, again. Yeah. You know, it, it's self contained. Yeah. You know. But it also opens itself up. There's even a there's an urban legend they kind of we twist at the end where you're like, oh my goodness, like uh, it's not for Jake Stone to go. No, I'm, I'm away. I'm out of this. Like <laughs> um, I'm not staying in here long. And I just really enjoyed it. As I said, twenty eight pages. I mean, we got graphic horror. We got Nazi experience. We got throwbacks to some crazy seventies yeah, and eighties horror films. 20 odd all in twenty odd pages. Wow. And that's you know, and that was that was part of a three pound a month subscription. So when you Come back and to come back to DC when you when you balance that out to like a five dollar when it cost me about four pound twenty yeah. four pound twenty comic that infuriated me to the part I cancelled r- remaining mm. series you know I've I've I paid my three pound for uh, the comic house stuff I read a really interesting comic book and I've got more lined up you know and I'm and I'm still within my three pound a month so it was just good um well done um I'll put up all the links and the. Um, when we put the video on the audio up, I'll put up all the links to our beers and to our comics so you can find this stuff. But mm-hmm. I did notice Chelsea, who coloured this book, had liked the post on Instagram, which really? was quite nice. Um, yeah. So she, so they're aware that we're reviewing as well. It's one of the things I've actually really enjoyed about this whole process, is that we've... Um, uh, Get a bit of interaction. We're getting a lot of interaction with creators. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Comic creators and stuff as well, yeah. 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 Cool. Um, we have, drinking fast we, have one, we have one more beer. This is uh, the Colonel, based in London. Their export India Porter. We reviewed the Colonel before. I'm inter- I, I like how we played this the last, because this is pretty much in my head. And I thought this was the last time we reviewed the Colonel. This is like the electric, is the electromagnetic beer in my head. It's um, you a know, porter. it's a porter. So because your comics set in London, London, but there's the India tie as well. There's the, yeah, I suppose it could be. Um, yeah. That yeah. this brewery could feature in your uh, in your comic, and you wouldn't bat an eyelid. You know they could run past this in a, r- a race. And, um, <laughs> the camel. Okay. Let's um, see. Six point one. Hmm. Oh, it smells really different from uh, the rest. It smells like an IPA. It does. It's got an a real IPA. I'm really hoppy, actually. Yeah. 
Yeah, it doesn't if if I was doing a blind test on this, I'd swear that's an IPA. Mind you, I had a dark IPA oh, just yeah. the other week. I can't remember who made it, but it was a dark IPA, and it was it was not as dark as that, but it was. Um, and it didn't again just tasted like an IPA. But let's see okay. what this tastes like. Yeah, it's got a sort of slightly citrusy kind of IPA. A wee bit more smokier once you drink it, a wee mm-hmm. bit more bitter. Yeah. That the more sort of what well, you associate with a porter. That, that could be a dark IPA, like you said. If you said, mm-hmm. oh, this is a dark IPA with a label, I would have gone, yeah. oh, that's interesting. I've not had a dark IPA. What I did want to note about this is I looked, I looked this beer up in my research beforehand and it advertised itself as 6.5%, but they wanted you to note, and it wasn't until I'd seen the note that I found this, uh, that, that I realised this. The ABV on this beer will vary depending on the batch, mm-hmm. um, the, but the recipe is still the same. So 6.5, I think, is what they're aiming for, mm-hmm. but your bottles are 6.1. Yeah, it is. And if you look on them tap, they're, you know, there's 6.7, 6. oh, 6.8, okay. there's there's 5.9s. Um, I really like the way the Colonel do their um, their, their labelling. Um, yeah, it's, it's just like brown packing paper, yeah. isn't it? And like it's been just... Put it very simply. We um, I've noticed that a lot in the when we go to the the Caledon and Craft Beer Merchant to pick up my beer, um, it's like walls of art. But there's obviously different kind of vibes what that folk are hoping to get from their packaging. So you've got mm. Tiny Rebel who uh, I've got their glass because I'm a fan of a massive fan of their beer. They um they have quite barmy like quite mm-hmm. um pop art eh? like you, you would think like sort of like James Hewitt or something was, was, was hired yeah. to do their drawings it's really cartoony and really yeah. silly and That's right. and then you've got obviously oh, Stuart the, Brewer who we've got their glass yeah. here they have quite ornate yeah. beautifully drawn it looks like comic book art yeah. um, and then, off, off like cityscapes and yeah. stuff and, that. and then we've got companies like well, North Brewing and Overtone mm-hmm. and things who, who have these kind of abstract kind of yeah. looks about them. Yeah. certainly there is there is there is a, a certain number of breweries, the Colonel included, that do this kind of. They're going for, like you say, this packaging. This, you know, you would rows and rows of this with this like brown packaging with like a stamp on it. Yeah. Um, lunches will do it as well. Mm, yeah, um, they do, yeah. Uh, but yeah. That's really, really nice. It's. It's quite a big bottle as well, mm-hmm. isn't it? It's one of the more bitter ones. I think the two tinned ones are quite smooth. Mm-hmm. The two bottled ones have been quite bitter. I wonder if that's coincidence or... I don't think it's coincidence, I really do. Yeah. I, um, I really like that. It's, um... But interesting because it, it does taste like, it taste and smell like an IPA. don't know that's why I like uh, it. Less so in the taste, I think. Yeah. The, the porter um, aftertaste is there. Yeah. But yeah, very interesting. What's your second comic? No, my last comic. So, Lady Mechanica, this is volume four. Mm-hmm. Though there is about seven volumes, I think, in total. Yeah. So this is a couple of years old. <coughs> though I only picked it up recently. Um, it's, it's the Clockwork Assassin, so it's a collection of, I think, about four issues or something that came out a couple of years ago. Um, Lady Mechanica is a steampunk, sort of retro-futuristic, um, yeah. sort of sci-fi tale. Um, the main character, Lady Mechanica, who's not the person in the front, um, that I'll find a picture, um, is this character who, in the, her first story, was, was sort of found in, a, in an abandoned laboratory um, and her limbs have been replaced by mechanical ones. Okay. Um, and she has no memory of her past, how, what happened to her, how she came yeah. that way. Um, anyway, she, she gets found, she is kind of brought into society um, and she kind of carves out a career as a sort of private detective, okay. you know, taking on kind of unusual cases. And the, the, there's a sort of mixture of sort of technology, science and supernatural yeah, okay. all the stories. So there's there's occasional, there's been um, story arcs where she's been a bit kind of Indiana Jonesy, you know, yeah. kind of looking for a lost, you know, relic. Yeah. There's been other ones where she's been a bit more like um, Sherlock Holmes, so more, more kind of standard thing. detective yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this one's a little bit different um, in that there's been a series of murders um, and the the culprit who's been seen looks like 
Lady Mechanica. Okay. So she's immediately um, becomes a suspect. Becomes yeah. the suspect. Um, and there's a recurring character, uh, Inspector Singh, who I think works for Scotland Yard. Um, he he comes to you know kind of question her and stuff. Um, another uh, recurring character um, is Mr. Lewis, who is Lady Mechanica's sidekick. Okay. He's sort of you know he's the sort of technical buffoon guy. Um, so he he's in this story as well. He's in most of the stories, but he. he plays a bigger part this time because as she starts to investigate the murders and to clear her name, um, they start to discover that the people that are being killed um, are all ex-colleagues of Lewis. Okay. And they all used to work for this corporation in the past, working on some sort of mysterious device. Mm. So um, it all kind of hinges around that. Um I quite like the series. Um, like I say, it's been around for quite a number of years. I think it's probably about something like 2011, 2012 when it first came out. I picked um, up, um, I we said this earlier, I picked up a free comic book arc I yeah. got last year. I wasn't, I, I think I picked it up and then realised that it was such a, it was a long running series and I found that quite daunting and kind of left it. Uh-huh. Um, uh, I will say though it, 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 that might put you off thinking oh that's number four why would I go and read that if I haven't yeah. read the first ones but the the um, creator Joe Benitez um, has cleverly made sort of each arc almost stand alone yeah. they really that don't really rely good. much on the previous that's ones really at all that's good to know which is good so you can just pick up you know if you only see issue five or something in the shop you can pick it up about a follow the storyline mm-hmm. without really knowing much about um, it's quite stunning isn't it like, yeah the artwork is amazing mm-hmm. it really is um, and it, I think the, the when it came out it was um, just these long and, and Joe Benitez did the whole lot himself yeah. to begin with but he started to work with more people perhaps as the project becomes a bit more complicated yeah. and stuff Um so you know he'd start enough to know the artwork and the writing, um, and it's his own publishing company as well, yeah. um, which is pretty amazing. Um, I, I'm not sure if he, if he does other stories, if they publish other things, because I haven't come across anything else. But um, I really like Lady Mechanic. It's the probably the most mainstream steampunk genre comic that there is. Yeah. Because it's been around for for a while and keep you know they just keep putting out new ones, mm-hmm. um, and. Anybody that, that's into kind of steampunk and comics will know about Lady Mechanica because okay. it is the big yeah, kind okay. of steampunk genre story. Um, I really like it. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, if you like that kind of Sherlock Holmes mad scientist, yeah, well, I know thing, you do. So then you know that, that's probably your thing too. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Right. So we got our beer of the week. We have got to decide. Are we going to? We're going to do. I'm. I'm. I'm still <coughs> working out to do this. Um, I'm hoping to do something towards the end of the year where we where we do like a beer of the year, and we will try and find out a way to do comic of the year as well. Mm. Um, but um, we talked to this before. Um, I read a lot of comics. I know Colin needs a lot. But comics is probably just the one that sticks in the yeah, head yeah, most. Yeah, totally. But certainly, the end of the year. Certainly, um, like, and uh, some somebody did ask me on fa- on my Facebook Messenger recently, like, how come you've got a beer? of the week but not comic of the week and I was saying like actually um, I do re- I do drink beers and I, I rate them on a tap but with regards to comics I, I read loads I probably read one or two a night mm-hmm. and does my wife's not I'm going to lie in bed and she's like the light's still on because I'm reading um, but uh, I think if I, if I read 10 comics in a week I'm picking the two that I want to talk about the mm-hmm. more so yeah, yeah. obviously I know I was, so quite, I was, I was quite crap on uh, Justice League 25 now but that um, like Jake Stone was my comic of the week in terms of yeah. I selected this because of all the other comics I read this week that was when I was like oh that's good mm-hmm. that, that's yeah. worth talking about well I'm the same I've yeah. read quite a lot I've read several commandos this week yeah. uh, as well some older ones that I picked up in a charity shop the other day um, I've read a couple of graphic novels but um yeah, if I'm doing a comic of the week, Lady mm. Mechanica. Mm. I had um artwork. I'm re- I'm story. currently reading a series that um like a graphic novel. I might review next week called Voracious. Oh, okay. Um, um, and I'm re- I'm really really enjoying it. But I want to I want to read the whole thing before I review it. But I might probably review it next week. But that's quite cool. It's the guy um the guy who works out. He's got a um a a kind of a, a time bubble or an ability to time travel. And mm. um, he owns a restaurant. And he's got um he's got a time bubble in the, in his back room, and he can visit the, the Jurassic period, 
So what he's doing is he's killing dinosaurs and then <laughs> and then cooking them and serving them. And I'm like, this I is cool. <laughs> so I want to talk about that at some point. Um, so it's great. But yeah, um, Jake Stone won this. Jake Stone won this week. What are we going to go for then? Um, is, is what we, what's, I, our, what we, what's our final two? For me, the Orkney Porter is yeah, it's just too it's, strong. Yeah. It's just, whoa, overpowering. Some folk total love that. And as I say, we were proper... Um, as we keep saying, and we've always said about this, um, everything we do is subjective. And as I said, yeah, it, it you might like it. Yeah. Just because we don't, yeah, it doesn't not, mean you won't like it. You should check it out and actually see we're right as well. And let us know if you think we're right yeah. or not. See, with that Justice League 25, that got reviewed so heavily good. And I'm like, I thought mm-hmm. it was not very nice. Well, like, do you like celery, Jeff? I, I actually really like celery. See, you like celery. I would spit it out. And ah. st- I hate celery. So there you go. That, that, you that was a weird just, example. Well, uh, the, reason I, the reason it comes up, it came up was because I used it earlier today as an oh, example. Okay. Where um, a guy that I know um, was wanting to go and see a movie. I can't remember what the movie was, but he had posted two different tweets, I think, hmm. from people that he know, knows tweeting about the movie, and one was saying, oh, rubbish, don't go and see it, you know, almost yeah. walked out. Another person saying, oh, that was a solid 8 out of 10. Yeah. You know, and he was like, well, I mean, what, what do I go with? I just have to go and see it yeah. myself. Absolutely. Um, so, and, 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 I'd, and I'd replied to him saying, well, do you like celery? Because I don't. Yeah. You know, and it's just the same. You just There's no accounting for people's taste. <laughs> totally. Yeah, so um, yeah, too strong. Um, I'd like later beers, I, mm-hmm. and actually, I, I'm pleasantly surprised by how much I love porters. But that's pushing it to the the other end of porterdom. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I porterdom. You like that? You like that word? Pushing it all the way uh, to porterdom. Right, okay. I told you this happens towards the end of a podcast. I my personal choices are either the mocha or the kernel. Oh really? I get annoyed to have See, see, I, I would. Uh, I know you like that one. So I, the, the I do mocha think. I do think we should read. The, okay. Can we retry this one then? And the Baltic. We we try the Baltic because that was the first mm-hmm. beer, and that always gets the unfair. Yeah. Uh, comparison. Yeah, we we think it does. I, yeah. Was it not last week though? Last week's beer one won yeah, for does, the first yeah. time. It was last week when there's not a porter. Porters have won a couple of weeks, haven't they? I'm not sure that's a that, so. I am. When we did the live show, my porter was my beer of the week, was a porter. And that's what it was. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, you're right. Just remember, not, not, not a lot in the smell. Berries in the taste. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's totally pleasant. It's, I, I'm not loving that as much as you are, I don't think. It's nice. Okay. Um, That's fair enough. <clears throat> see, I did just gulp half of it down quite very quickly. Right. Do you want to try the Northern Monk again? Okay. I, the Northern Monk, I'm not going to lie, I think is my easy pick for beer of the week. This is not much of a contest for me this week. I think you picked a really nice... Oh, I just love this. The smell is great. Mm-hmm. That lovely coffee smell coming through there. It's just light. It's nice. I think I, I, they've made something really special. There. Yeah. You know. They've worked. They've worked quite. If hard. you don't like coffee, don't buy it. Yeah. I mean, let's face it, because it's very coffee. Um, they've worked out. They've. I mean, if you look at it, some. Mm. They've they brewed it, so they've mentioned the the brewer is Colin Strong, Strange. Um, so they, they they I think they've reckoned that there's something special going on in that. Um, mm-hmm. I would buy that again, again personally. Yeah, I think I would as well. That's my beer of the week personally. I don't. I, I, no, it is for me too. I can't. I, I don't think other tourists really can lovely. compete with it. But you should all. You it's should. not a straightforward porter. It's obviously yeah. got this mm. coffee thing going on about it, um, but that just makes it all the more special. Yeah. And that's what craft beer is about. It's yeah. about things that are different. You know, not your run of the mill stuff that you can mm. buy anywhere. Your, right. your small micro brewing. I had to explain that to somebody stuff. today about about like how can how is craft beer a hobby? And I was like, because it's about it is that it's about checking something and going. You know, this this might be this might blow my mind, or I might just. I have to hide the can because I'm upset that I spent four pound on it. <laughs> but um, um, yeah, it's it's great. Um, 
um, I mean, I've got friends that are I've got friends that are questioning what the whole blue gooders thing is, and he's like, um, I've got a friend that drinks a lot of cider, and obviously he's like, oh well, cider is a oh, bit well, different. You can probably know. They know. Yeah. <laughs> I call it tractor wine to annoy him. Here's <laughs> 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 um, to that. <laughs> yeah, but um, he like I was saying because I sent um, quite a lot of people that really what I thought was a really good link for the the beers the the beer box the beer fifty two, mm, yeah. and he was like, oh, I don't drink beer though. And I was like, I think you could tick a cider box so. <laughs> but um, he asked you yeah, like what's the fascination why why is why is this why is everyone going why is everyone going craft beer mental and the firm on the side it's like because it's there and it's it's exciting and you can try and mm-hmm. you know like like you can have a raspberry beer and if you don't like it then you can go back and try a mango one and be like oh my goodness it's great yeah um, and I'm you know we've been doing this for 10 weeks now this is 42 beers we've drunk since mm-hmm. we, so but a lot of folk are very stuck in their ways yeah. they you know oh I just drink tenants you know mm-hmm. and that's it and they won't try anything yeah. else even though <clears throat> tenants <laughs> you I know two um, of tenants or, have you, have you, we talked about this before but um, and I know uh, Colin's mentioned it a few times on his um, on his Caledonia Craft Beer Merchant Facebook page about like that moment where you're stuck somewhere that doesn't serve craft beer and you want to do something exciting yeah, and you're yeah. like oh, can I have a pint of Carlin please yeah, yeah. <laughs> because there's nothing else yeah, nothing yeah, else behind yeah. the bar yeah absolutely um, my local doesn't do anything other than tenants and if, I'm like oh if I go to a, a place you know and, and the best I can usually get is something like a Bellhaven Best yeah. or maybe a Dukers IPA or something yeah. is the best I can get some, in some places you know yeah. and, and but we're yeah. gonna we're gonna be looking at pubs it's in the next dull. month. Yeah, we're both yeah. on holiday for quite an ex- <laughs> quite a, quite ridiculous a amount of time. Know. So we're gonna go to some pubs and do some pub few, Have a few beers and attempt to get between the pubs. Maybe meet some comic people. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe some some brewers or people with uh, beer knowledge. Absolutely, we're excited. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah. So it's only a couple weeks. That'll be it. yeah. Um, we'll be doing that soon. If there's any beers that people watch or listen, because um, I did the, I get a yeah recommendations recommendations. Hey folks, let us know. I um I didn't notice this before until this morning, but I got an email from I got an email from our podcast provider, the guys that oh, yeah that tell me exactly how many folk are downloading and listen to us. I didn't realize this was a thing, mm-hmm. but we're getting oh, about fifty folk downloading us every week. Oh, it's pretty, cool. pretty good. So yeah, let, let us know if you're one of the fifty. Um probably getting a couple hundred views on Facebook most videos mm-hmm, yeah. so if you're one of the people watching let us know and let us know what we could be watching or what, what we could be reviewing comic or, 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 well. or comics you know yeah. if you're a comic writer send us a PDF or something we'll, yeah. uh, otherwise, otherwise we'll just pick yeah. what we think yeah, looks a, interesting a new so. book coming out you want us to talk about uh, yeah. we'd love to read it and, and yeah. let our viewers and listeners totally. uh, find out about it um, pour so. us, do the cheers properly we did this last week and I drank all my beer. I noticed when we, if you watch the video back, you've got a glass of beer and I've got nothing. No. And we do a cheers and I'm like, I'm just cheers and I have to go. Well, but yeah, we go. Until next week, guys. Cheers. cheers.